Hi, this is Andrew from LaptopReviews.com, and I have here with me today the ThinkPad X230 tablet on the left, and then just the regular edition X230 on the right. Uh, I just wanted to go over some uh, similarities and difference between these two notebooks, simply because those that are buying the ThinkPad X230 might uh, wonder why, hey, let's, let's just spend an extra 150, 200 bucks and get the tablet functionality. Um, because it seems like a no-brainer. But uh, there are some features and differences that might make you just want the regular laptop version if you don't really need that tablet PC functionality. So we'll just go for those. First of all, you'll notice that the, uh, with the screens here, the X230 tablet rides up higher. So I have them leveled out even with each other, but you see that there's about an inch height difference here in the X230 tablet simply because the um, the hinging mechanism is different and the way the the screen needs to come down and be in slate mode um, it's just different so um, just overall you have a bigger body um, it's a little hard to see if I rotate around here and show you from the back you'll see that though there the X230 tablet sticks out some more so um, and it has a little more depth to it I guess is the bottom line there. Um, another difference, if you have the WAN on the X230 tablet, you'll notice there's a housing it has on top. Uh, I have WAN in the X230, but there's no need for that. Not sure why, but it's just the case. Um, on the front side, there's a little bit of a styling difference. Um, so on the X230 tablet, it's a pretty, not a sharp corner, but it's uh, there's no curved slope like you get on the X230 regular edition. Um, so uh, let's just go over some of the uh, the port selections now. Um, it is this uh, essentially the same, although there's one mild difference on the X230 tablet, and that occurs on the left side. So on the X230 tablet left side, you see there's a USB 2.0 or 3.0, and then a VGA monitor out. Then there's a full-size display port right there and then there's a USB 3.0 and then you have an express card slot um, we come around to the right side here um, we have a media card reader USB 2.0 port that's charged Ethernet slot and then you have the uh, the electric pen is e-pen is right there that you need to push in to pop it out let me just demonstrate that here actually um, you just kind of give it a push and there's your stylus pen. And it's pretty easy to put back in. Easily. It's just spring loaded mechanism. On the back side is just the power jack there. So, like I said, uh, I'm not going to waste time to go through all the ports on the X230, but there is one difference that I wanted to point out, and that is that the display port down here. Is a, it's a little hard to see because my focus is off, but it's a mini display port instead of a regular size display port that you get on the X230 tablet. It's kind of an interesting difference and might be meaningful to some, I guess would be an advantage of the X230 tablet. Um, so as far as the hinges go, I just wanted to show how the X230 tablet hinge works and how you can rotate it. So it rotates clockwise. So um, it's you know scooch it in here a little bit. As I zoom out, um, you just give it a push there on the left side and then rotate it around and you bring the screen down and voila. You'll notice that the screen on the X330 tablet that I have is the outdoor viewable screen and it is glossy so um, you do get some reflections there. They're both IPS screens and that's a, fun that's a feature on both that you can opt for for $50 and I do recommend um, but um, with the glossy screen, uh, it's a little bit of a downer because you do get some reflections there. Um, you, however, you can get a multi-touch screen on the X230 tablet, which is matte, and uh, I would actually recommend that having uh, experienced the X230 outdoor viewable screen. I can't say that I would, I would purchase it again if I were, in, um, if I were doing it over. So. Of course, having that tablet functionality can be a major benefit if you're going to be um, doing a lot of drawing or you need to, you just want to have that um, pen touch input or multi-touch input. Um, one other difference that I wanted to point out is that the six cell battery that I have on both of these, uh, it's kind of odd on the bottom of the X230 tablet in that 
it has this sort of hollow area and it's a bubble and it sticks out quite a bit. Um, whereas on the X230 regular, you just see kind of a ridge underneath. There's no actual, there's no like hollowed out weird area on the bottom there that you can see on the tablet functionality. And you really do get a, a more of a feel for the overall uh, extra depth on the X230 tablet here on the left as well. It's, uh, it's quite a bit deeper. Um, there's a, other than that, not a whole lot else worth mentioning. I guess the weight is certainly heavier on the tablet as well, which is somewhat ironic because uh, you're gonna be, theoretically, you could be carrying it a lot more if you're gonna be using it in slate mode. Um, the uh, the pricing, as I said before, it, it varies a bit, but it's around $200 more expensive for the X230 tablet. Um, and also from above here, you can see how the 6L sticks out a whole lot more. I do believe that Lenovo did that for somewhat of usability because if you're going to be picking up the X230 tablet, it's nice to have kind of an area you can grab. And it is structurally sound back here, so you can grab it by the battery and easily pick it up. Um, I will also mention that the X230 tablet is slightly thicker than the X230 regular. So, um, you know, that's another thing if you're looking for a thin, thin and light, then the X230 regular is going to be thinner than the tablet. So if you stay tuned to laptopreviews.com, we'll have reviews of both of these versions of the X230 coming up.